Hello, uh, salam, merhaba, uh, welcome. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to learn a little bit more about the CLS program and specifically CLS Azerbaijani and CLS Turkish Institutes. Um, we're going to be talking about the 2021 CLS program uh, in this webinar. Um, and the CLS program is a webinar, is a program of the US Department of State with funding provided by the US government supported in its implementation by us here at American Councils for International Education. And I am Bo Knudsen. I work with the uh, CLS program at American Councils for International Education. And I'll be talking you through our institutes today. We're also very lucky to have uh, Monique Bowie uh, with us today. She's an alumna of the 2019 CLS Turkish program and Chelsea Cervantes Dugla, an, an alumna of the 2019 CLS Azerbaijani program. Both Monique and Chelsea also served as CLS alumni ambassadors uh, in the last year, which means basically they conduct outreach for the program and um, have attempted to spread the word about CLS Turkish and CLS Azerbaijan. Okay, so let's get started. In this presentation, we will start with an overview of the CLS program, including some more specific details about the Azerbaijani and Turkish institutes. Um, at the end, um, uh, We'll also talk through key components of these programs. Um, we'll hear from Chelsea and Monique, our alumni who are with us today. We are going to talk through tips and application, tips for the application uh, that is currently open now uh, on our website, and also give you a timeline of what of the application. So if you apply, then when will you hear back from us and, um, and what we need to know? What are the key dates moving forward? Um, we'll be happy to answer your questions in this webinar. Um, you can go ahead and enter them in the, in the Q&A box or the chat box. Um, we won't answer them as we go along, but probably more towards the end. Um, feel free also to write some specific questions for Chelsea and Monique. They will be able to join us in the Q&A to share their perspectives and um, join in in, in trying to flesh out uh, answers to your questions. So let's jump in. What is CLS? The CLS program is summer study abroad uh, that is fully funded by the US government and particularly it's language study. It supports US students in all fields of study to learn what the US Department of State refers to as critical languages. Critical languages are those that are less commonly taught and studied on US campuses, but that are nonetheless critical to our engagement with the world. Azerbaijani and Turkish are just two of the 15 languages offered through the CLS program. If you haven't taken a good look at all of the languages offered by CLS, then you know, go to the website and, and check it out. It's really a broad list. Um, and uh, you know, worth considering um, all the different languages, especially as you have conversations with your peers who might be interested in this opportunity. When we say that the program is fully funded, we mean that it's designed to be of no cost to you as a student. Um, this is something that we cannot emphasize enough uh, in our recruitment and outreach efforts. And it's something that people here might go in one year and out the other, um, but we need to reemphasize it constantly. So the program covers domestic travel from each participant's home in the US to Washington DC for pre-departure orientation, as well as round trip international travel to your program site where your language institute will be. The program covers applicable visa fees, as well as the cost of tuition to the host institution, room and board, cultural excursions, and activities in the host country. Our participants also receive a living stipend that helps them more fully uh, engage in the host community and, be, uh, and have cultural experiences. Alumni of the program receive undergraduate credit through Bryn Mawr College, as well as a certified ACTFL OPI test score and certificate to certify uh, their language progress. So you're considering this opportunity and you probably understand that proficiency in a critical language also opens a lot of doors to further academic and employment opportunities in all fields and will help really help you stand out to employers in the job market and give you an edge in an increasingly competitive and globalized uh, landscape. But why Azerbaijani or why Turkish? Um, I'm gonna give you a couple pitches <laughs> as to why these are good options for you. Um, Turkish, uh, basically um, is, is a major global language. Uh, approximately 75 million people speak Turkish as their first language in the world. It's one of the world's 15 most widely spoken first languages. Another 15 million people speak Turkish as a second language. 
In addition to Turkey, uh, Turkish speaking peoples live in the Balkans, the Caucasus, and in Western Europe. And there's, there are large immigrant communities of uh, Turks around the world. Uh, and one example is just Germany, where Turkey is the second most widely spoken language after German. Um, Turkey is a country of unique geopolitical significance um, that's strategically connected to many different regions of the world, uh, geographically and culturally. Um, some of these regions are Eastern Europe, Central Asia, the Middle East, even Northern Africa. It's the world's 16th largest economy with a fast growing consumer middle class. As Turkey's economic and political influence increases, Turkish and the knowledge of Turkish are really valuable assets sought by corporations, NGOs, government agencies, and research institutions engaged in the region, but also around the world. Um, there are many career opportunities that open up for speakers of Turkish in sectors um, diverse as technology, cybersecurity, energy, hospitality, finance, law, business, and government. For those interested in a career in the public sector with the US government, um, the US government does actively recruit Turkish speakers for roles in the areas of diplomacy, intelligence, and the military. There's also 12 different countries around the world that recognize Turkish as a minority language. These numbers don't really factor in the huge number of Turkish speaking communities um, uh, that are in many countries, um, such as Bulgaria, Greece, England, um, but some of these Turkish uh, countries that recognize Turkish as a minority language include Cyprus, East Cyprus, um, Bulgaria, uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Kosovo, and the list goes on. Um, Turkish is, and is really interesting from a linguistic perspective, um, basically, um, and one of the reasons is it's related to um, much older uh, ancient languages um, that are known as like the Turkish language family. Um, this language group consists of 35 languages spoken by over 109 million Turkish peoples from Eastern Europe all the way to Western China. These languages are, uh, very much connected um, with uh, common vocabulary, common grammar, and common uh, construction principles, meaning that if you speak Turkish, you will have a really a gateway and, a, and an entryway into uh, studying dozens of other languages and having comprehension um, to some degree in other languages too. Um, one of the unique and interesting aspects uh, that's really distinctive about Turkic languages are uh, vowel harmony which is when vowels of the suffixes change to complement the vowels in the stem of the word and make the word flow really easily in one breath. Um, and agglutinative grammar, which basically means that uh, suffixes stack up in the word. Each suffix has a distinctive meaning and it adds on to the word so that you can say a whole sentence in one word. Um, you just would need the correct set order of the suffixes. Um, so we've been talking a little bit about Turkish, but um, Azerbaijani is also a, a, a critically important language. Um, there's very few people in America who can learn or speak Azerba Azerbaijani. Um, those who study Azerbaijani can find careers in a variety of fields, um, including business, consulting, translation, and interpreting, foreign service, intelligence, journalism, uh, but also in the gas and oil sectors. Um, this is a uh, part of the world that is strategically important also um, because of its gas and oil resources and its ability to work um, in energy security uh, with countries around the world. And so this is really a, a, a niche skill, um, speaking Azerbaijani, that can be quite valuable. Um, Azerbaijani also is a, a, a culturally uh, unique place in the Caucasus. And um, speaking Azerbaijani will give you access to Azerbaijani speakers who live in other places in the Caucasus, um, such as Georgia, um, Turkey, uh, and uh, Russia. Uh, there's also a um, population in uh, Iran of uh, nearly one million uh, Azeri speakers. So um, what begins as sort of a niche language, um, once uh, a speaker starts immersing themselves in Azerbaijani, quickly learns about the connections that, as, um, that knowing Azerbaijani can allow you to make around uh, the region. Uh, there is no minimum language requirement for either Azerbaijani or Turkish. If you have experience speaking Azerbaijani or Turkish, you would just want to apply at the appropriate level, um, a level higher than beginner. Um, you can't, if you have no experience, of course you can't apply at the beginner level. Both institutes accommodate 
beginner level instruction. Uh, while some students may have studied languages in a formal classroom, at the college or university level, other language learning experiences might be substituted for formal classes, such as self-study, tutoring, high school coursework, or knowledge of the language from your home environment. Um, it, it's common. We do have heritage speakers uh, apply for the CLS program and participate. There is space in the application for you to describe your experience and how it meets the proficiency requirements for the level that you're applying for. Um, previous study does not need to appear on your academic transcript, but you do need to apply at the appropriate level. And we have tips on our website, it's linked from our application, to help you determine what level you should apply for based on your experience. Now let's uh, shift slightly um, and take a look at our CLS Institute partners for CLS Azerbaijani and CLS Turkish from past years, uh, with whom we expect to work in 2021. So Azerbaijan University of Languages is the host institute for the CLS Virtual Institute for Azerbaijani this, um, uh, this coming summer. Um, that we've also worked with AUL um, since uh, 2010 on CLS Azerbaijani and between the years of 2016 and 2019 for CLS Turkish, when at the request of the State Department, the CLS Turkish program was moved to Baku. Uh, AUL is in Baku, which is the capital of Azerbaijan. Uh, AUL is the country's leading institution in the education of linguists and international relations experts. And AUL's teachers uh, are often, ha they have a, a vast background in working with international students and teaching them Azerbaijani. Um, many of the language partners are members of the, uh, or study in the International Relations or English as a Second Language program at AUL. And in general, AUL is kind of considered um, one of the leading research institutions in uh, languages and in uh, international relations and uh, government in Azerbaijan. It's a vibrant community, and many of our participants who study at AUL uh, maintain this institutional connection and return to AUL for coursework or for uh, research. Um, the teachers uh, and staff at AUL really are enthusiastic about the program and, and working with our learners. Um, and this coupled with the friendly nature uh, of Azerbaijani culture and sort of the, the uh, hospitality of Azerbaijani culture really helps to make our students feel welcome from day one. The CLS Turkish program is hosted by Ankara University Tomer, which is a CLS Institute partner, which is our CLS Institute partner in Turkey. Ankara is Turkey's capital and second largest city with a population of 4.5 million people. Ankara is a public federally funded institution and was the first university founded after the formation of this, the, the modern state of Turkey in 1923. In the present day, Ankara University is an international research university with 40 vocational programs, 120 undergrad programs and 110 graduate programs. It's a wide, it's a large extended um, uh, academic community and um, Tomer has multiple campuses um, in Turkey. Uh, Tomer is an acronym for Türkçe Öğretim Merkezi or Turkish Learning Center. Uh, Tomer was founded in 1984 and was the first Turkish higher education institution to teach Turkish to international students and remained the only such institution in Turkey until the mid-90s. They have an extremely driven cadre of teachers, language partners, and staff, and they are really enthusiastic about working with the CLS program. We have worked with Tomer since 2010 in Turkey, um, apart from that, that gap that I re referred to um, between the years of 2016 and 2019. In a typical CLS summer, each of our partner institutes holds up to 30 CLS students uh, at site and facilitates an intensive eight-week program for students that includes 20 classroom hours or language instruction hours each week, cultural activities, local excursions, and one or two overnight trips on the weekends. Um, I should mention that um, the CLS Azerbaijani program is typically smaller in size um, than other CLS institutes. Um, we've had uh, on average, usually um, between seven and 10 participants of CLS Azerbaijan this year. Um, the program is academically challenging. Every aspect is designed to maximize language gains and your immersion in the host culture. When, when students participate in the CLS program, um, they agree to a language policy which affirms that they will only speak 
Azerbaijani or Turkish while in class on cultural excursions and activities and with their host families and language partners. Um, most of our participants do live with host families and each student is assigned to a language partner for practice outside of the classroom. CLS uh, students also are placed at their language level, at their classroom level, once they arrive to country. So you will apply for a language uh, in, in your application to be part of that cohort, but you will be tested again when you arrive to country. Okay, because of the immersive nature of the CLS program, participants also have really unique opportunities to build meaningful relationships in their host communities with friends and colleagues from around the country and peers in the CLS cohort who come from all over the United States. But two aspects of the program that are really quite unique and valuable to your intensive language learning are language partners and host families. Um, language partners are usually students or uh, uh, people in their early 20s who, uh, study, who might study at the host institution or might have recently graduated. Um, they commit two hours uh, of their time a week to our CLS students. Um, to really practice the language informally outside of the classroom um, and just sort of, you know, help them understand the youth perspectives in, 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 in the community and then also kind of help them explore their areas of interest, whatever our students are interested in. Um, sometimes language partners and students meet for more than two hours a week, um, sometimes up to four, but two is the minimum. Um, language partners and our students develop warm bonds and really have a chance to um, use the language uh, in, a, in, a, in a living way um, and uh, explore a lot of topics that they wouldn't get a chance to explore in the classroom. Um, the students are often, um, uh, yeah, the language partners are often students of the host institution and live in the host community too. Um, host families are the other major component of the CLS program. Um, they have agreed to host a student uh, for the two months, uh, two month duration of the program. Uh, they are able to guarantee the student a separate room, uh, two square meals a day, um, and a, uh, a key to the apartment um, or house where they live. Um, host families usually live within 45 minutes of the host institution by public transport. They also provide conversation and company to our students. Um, it's really um, valuable for our students to get insights into everyday life through the host family experience and also to just talk in everyday conversation. Um, so uh, these components of repetition of everyday conversation, learning new vocabulary, and learning to talk about their lives with their host family really helps them have conversations outside of the host family and in the classroom and really develops language skills. Um, we're lucky that um, uh, we have host families um, that have hosted for many years. Um, they often, you know, are repeat hosts. And uh, they are a great way for our participants to meet new people in the community and expand their network of acquaintances. They're often invited as house guests to friends and acquaintances of the host families and are, have the opportunity to meet the host family's extended family. Um, host families are scouted and vetted by our, by our partners overseas. And they also participate in an application and interview process to be selected for this opportunity. Depending on the health and safety considerations, it may be necessary to hold some or all of the 2021 CLS institutes virtually. In that case, virtual instruction will follow a similar structure, emphasizing the use of language, cultural learning, and building relationships between CLS scholars and the people of the host country. We are having a virtual program this fall in CLS Azerbaijani and CLS Turkish. CLS students this fall do have individual language partners and they are able to participate virtually in cultural activities uh, through guest lectures by musicians. Uh, we have a chef who prepares traditional dishes and we have virtual tours of the community. Um, we have a lot of different um, experiences we try to expose students to even though we are our virtual program this fall. So um, we expect, uh, we do not know um, whether this will be the case for 2021. We are preparing for, for a summer program, an in-person program, and that's the program you will apply to. However, um, this fall we have proved, uh, I think that we, we've been versatile in adapting to a virtual context. Um, if we will do that again, we will not know probably until uh, spring of 2021. 
Cultural activities and excursions are a really important part of the CLS program. In past years, cultural activities in Azerbaijan and Turkey have included cultural trips to sites of historical, cultural, or religious significance, visits with members of the community to give insights into cultural traditions and everyday life. Some of these cultural traditions might be related to cuisine, music, art, and dance, or religion. Um, our students do meet with religious leaders uh, sometimes um, and go visit landmarks to better understand the role of religion in the region in everyday life. <clears throat> they make excursions uh, and visit indigenous peoples in Turkey and the Caucasus um, and basically learn about the local economy and um, uh, people's everyday lives. Um, excursions and activities can change a little bit year to year um, depending on the site. Each site has a resident director or RD who is proficient in both English and the target language. I'm a former RD, so if you have any RD specific questions, please be sure to just ask them in the chat and I'll be happy to answer them. RDs hold weekly meetings with all students and are available for any individual support you might need while you're on the program. We like to say CLS is a great program for students who have never been overseas because of the support that we're able to provide. RDs are there to communicate with host country program staff and navigate your new city and are available to do things like take you to the doctor and help translate if you get sick. There's not, uh, they are also there to lend an ear if you need support with adjustment to the host culture or community. Um, and another key component of the program is the alumni community. Uh, this is a component that you would experience when you finish the program. Alumni of the program join a vibrant and engaged community of US Department of State and International Exchange alumni and gain access to resources and events supported by the program. In addition to the opportunity to study abroad and take language classes on a fully funded program, there are a lot of benefits that come from participating um, in the CLS program. Students make substantial gains in language, uh, in, in their language proficiency over the course of one summer. Beginners tend to make the most rapid language gains, but all participants are able to make language gains, even advanced speakers. Um, you will not come out of the program with just basic vocabulary you will be able to hold conversations in your target language. You will also receive a certificate of your language progress from the American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages or ACTFL. Um, our participants uh, take an OPI uh, interview, which is an oral proficiency index interview before the program and after the program. And we use this to, tra to track progress. Because of the immersive nature of CLS, participants also have unique opportunities to build meaningful relationships in their host communities with friends and colleagues from around, from the host country and peers in their CLS cohorts who come from all over the United States. Our participants um, in the cohorts keep in touch after the program and really serve as resources for each other as they have similar experiences and similar um, uh, goals in navigating the job market and academia. <laughs> Alumni of the program join a vibrant and engaged community um, of the U.S. Department of State International Exchange Alumni and gain access to a wealth of resources and events supported by the CLS program. Some of these resources include a jobs board, um, lots of um, events that happen around the country, lecture series, um, access to uh, online academic journals and magazines um, that otherwise require subscriptions, it's really a lot of resources um, and um, there are great opportunities. Um, CLS participants also uh, get access to non-competitive eligibility for federal employment for three years after the program, after they complete the program. Um, and just also to note, CLS partic participants do not have any service commitment to the US government after the completion of the program. Okay, so let's talk about the application. Um, the CLS application is available online now at clscholarship.org apply. In order to prepare a competitive application, we recommend that you start early and reach out to your resources on campus for help. It really helps your application if you have more sets of eyes on your essays. The application deadline is November 17th, 2020 at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that is 5 p.m. Pacific Time. You may apply for only one language, and you will need to submit an official and unofficial transcript and one recommendation letter. Four short essays and a statement of purpose form the core of the application. 
you'll notice here that the four short essays in the personal statement are not that long compared to other essays that you need to submit to other uh, competitive scholarship programs. So it's really important that you craft your essays and be as effective and concise as possible and make your point as strong as possible because this is, gonna, this is a competitive program. Okay, um, so I wanna um, just give some general advice about um, how you can make the best application possible. Um, I see some questions um, in, the, in the chat box about um, the application but, um, and tips. So uh, I can just give you some tips um, right now. Uh, we want, uh, basically one thing I can emphasize, um, this is re in response to one of the questions, is um, we want applicants from all disciplines and all fields of study. So successful applicants for CLS come from a wide range of backgrounds, not just international affairs or, 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 a, or, or world languages uh, faculty. They really come from all ac um, majors. Um, and so you wanna emphasize that diversity of your interests and make the connection between your job and how you wanna apply the language in your professional activities uh, with knowing the language. The program places an emphasis on students who are prepared for the rigorous academic program and the intensive nature of the program. So um, you want to uh, show that you can succeed on CLS. This means addressing your ability to study intensively, your skills at adapting to a group program setting, and your cultural flexibility and maturity. You should also show that you're motivated to pursue language study. Um, so, you know, not just motivated to go overseas for two months, but you're motivated to really learn the language and that you have a solid concrete plan for how you will continue learning and using the language in the future. This is key. You're gonna to wanna to talk about, you know, where you will study the language after the CLS program in your, in your essays. And finally, uh, possibly the most important aspect is you need to make a clear connection between the language you wish to study and your academic and professional goals. So really making that connection and strengthening that connection in more than one place in your essay is going to really uh, get the point across on how you want to use this language and what your path is, what your trajectory is, and what role CLS plays in that trajectory. Um, so I, I also just in general recommend <clears throat> you check out a video that is linked from the application and on our YouTube channel, uh, just CLS application tips, CLS application tips 2021. Um, this tips video really goes into a lot of concrete tips um, and really quite explicitly, I think, lays out, you know, what, what makes a essay or an application successful. So please watch that and then, you know, kind of apply uh, all that criteria and all that advice to the essays that, you, that you've written and that you're working with. Okay, so I've talked a lot. <laughs> I'd like to uh, switch over now um, and give our uh, alumni a chance to talk about themselves. And I think they'll also be able to articulate a path, that, the path that they've taken and sort of talk about their goals. And I think that could also be helpful for you as you think about your essays and applications. Um, so let me introduce Monique Bowie. Monique is an alumna of the 2019 CLS Turkish program in Baku, Azerbaijan. She is currently a senior at the University of North Texas, majoring in international studies with a concentration in development and humanitarian affairs with a minor in French and sociology. Monique is planning to attend graduate school and to study global human development, followed by a career in foreign service. She loves to dance, travel, and have game nights uh, with friends. So um, let me turn it over now to um, Monique. Perfect. Hi, everybody. Well, um, you guys can see my photo on the uh, screen. My name is Monique Bui. Um, I'm an alumni for the uh, alumna for the 2019 CLS Turkish um, studies. I was actually in Azerbaijan, so I didn't get a chance to go to Turkey. Tears, I know. Um, I cu I'm currently at the University of North Texas as an undergraduate. I'm a senior. I'm graduating um, with a bachelor's in international uh, development with a focus in humanitarian affairs, and my minor is French and sociology. Um, I speak four languages, English, French, Spanish, and Turkish. Um, Turkish is my fourth language, of course. Um, what I'm currently doing right now um, is 
I'm applying for Fulbright in Azerbaijan. Um, I fell in love with Azerbaijan, even though I was for Turkish. Um, a lot of them really speak, uh, speak Turkish as well. They speak a lot of languages, Russian, Azerbaijani, Turkish. So um, I just thought it was a really good chance for me to just go there and also uh, build upon my Azerbaijani and Turkish at the same time. So um, I'm applying to go live there for a year and teach English. Um, I had a really good time in Azerbaijan, guys. I was in two commercials. Uh, one commercial was for like one of the biggest water parks in Azerbaijan. And um, I was I spoke in the commercial. Um, and then in the second one, I, I did like a dance. Um, I was on the news. Yeah, I was on the news. You, it's so funny because I was on the news and I didn't speak Azerbaijani. And I, I only knew Turkish. So literally right before we were, we had to record, they were like, you need to learn Azerbaijani in five minutes. And I was like, what? They were like, I don't care what's going on. You need to learn Azerbaijani in five minutes. So I had to learn a quick sentence so that I could like it open up the news. It was really cool. Um, I got to speak at the Baku Youth Center um, about um, where I'm from. I'm Jamaican American. So I had this chance to do that. Um, my best advice for you guys is if you guys do are not online, if you are in country, I would say really just go all just go all out. Like I wouldn't have had those opportunities that I had if I didn't fully immerse myself in the community. Like um, I made Azerbaijani friends who I talk to to this day, um, my host sister. Um, like I just really went out. Like I spent my weekends really look, exploring, going around to new places. Um, meeting new people. So that was really, really the best part of my experience just because I just got to do so much. Like who would have thought, like I still look at that commercial to this day. Like I, I still go back and look at it. And I'm like, wow, that's me. Like I was in a commercial. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I like something that Bo said, and this will be my last point, sorry, because I'm talking too much. My last point is that you, the essays are really, like the word count is very small. So you guys really have to sell yourself immediately like you really have to tell your story um tell your story like because it's really short you don't get a lot of you don't get a, a really heavy word count and so just make every word count make your story count um that's really my best advice i feel like that's really what made me got, get the scholarship because i told my story i was straight to the point and i was very clear and cut um is the commercial on youtube yes i believe it's on youtube i can send it i, I can ask both it's okay if i send it in the uh, link and you guys can go ahead and take a look at it um yeah so um if you guys have any questions for me i'm an open book um i had one of the craziest experiences in azerbaijan because i am an african-american woman and um, they don't really see too many people um of color out there and so um, it's really, they really don't know. They just don't know a lot about us. And so I had the ability to kind of be a teacher and kind of be like a leader in a way. And it was really cool. And uh, I had got a lot of opportunities and it was really awesome. I think you guys are going to love it, to be honest. So if you have any questions for me, um, you can put it in the chat. And how do you think they will perceive me as first individuals? They'll be really confused at first Simone because they won't know what's going on they don't they won't know like they they won't understand the concept of like your mixed race like like they, they understand like so like for me they kept saying yeah how are you American but you're African they didn't understand that like I'm not like from Africa like I was born in Jamaica I was born in America but my family's from Jamaica does that does that make any sense a little sense you just have to teach them pretty much like just kind of teach them allow them to know about your background um but people will be a little bit confused at first <laughs> by mixed race individuals uh yeah what were some what were some of the greatest challenges you encountered during your stay um one of my greatest challenges was when I first uh, I spent a week before we went to our host families we spent a couple of days in in Azerbaijan and then when it was time for my host family to come pick me up um my host family actually denied me so I, um they weren't really they weren't too sure if they were comfortable having a a, a black skinned girl in their house so I actually had to find a host family last minute so I had to stay in a hotel for three days 
So when the family came to pick me up, they saw me and they were like, oh, um, they told, they didn't tell me to my face. They didn't, I didn't see them, if that makes sense. They saw me just sitting waiting and I was just like talking to my friend or whatever. And they were just like, you know, we really don't know if we feel comfortable having someone of darker skin in our house, you know. Um, but honestly, guys, that was a blessing because I have the most amazing host mom and the most amazing host sister. I don't think my experience would have been as amazing as it was if I didn't go stay with them. So yeah, that was one of my biggest challenges was because I had to, everybody got to go with their host family and I had to stay in the hotel. Um, question. Did you experience any particular negative experiences on your account of racist attitude or was it curiosity? I didn't really experience any negative, negative um, attitudes. I just feel, I just feel like they don't understand what they don't know, if that makes sense, guys. Like, they just really don't understand. Like, if Azerbaijan's a really closed off country, you know what I mean? They're surrounded by Russia, Armenia, like they're really closed off, if you get what I'm saying. So it's really, and my, I took it as curiosity because as I said before, people don't really understand what they don't know. Um, let's see questions, how on earth did they get approved to host anyone at all? I know, it's a little crazy, but I mean, don't be, I can't be too hard on them guys because like they just don't understand what they don't know. And some people are, are scared to take risks. They, they were older, they were like in their 50s. So like some people are scared to kind of take that risk. You know what I mean? Um, did, no, I didn't speak any French. I didn't speak any French. Mm -mm. Because they want you to speak the language. They want you to speak Turkish anytime you're out or wherever you're at. So I didn't even get a chance to speak any other languages. Um, Simone, you're Caribbean American. Awesome. Uh, I can give you my email, Simone, if you are having uh, any trouble like thinking about how it's going to be down there because I'm Jamaican as well. I'm, Car I'm Caribbean American too. So I can give you some pointers um, on kind of how to just like take, um, take in all of it because it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of when, once you get down there, it's a lot like it, it just feels like a lot is on your shoulder, but just take it day by day and um, you'll be okay. Don't worry. Um, how are host families selected? Um, how do cultural differences, religious freedoms work? Will we get help finding a church, for example? Okay, so um, so I, can, I can talk a little bit later about how host families are, are selected. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, but feel fine. free to offer your, your perspective though, too, Monique. Okay, okay, okay. Did you have an opportunity to travel? <clears throat> um, I didn't travel outside of Azerbaijan, but we did go, get to go to different um, cities. Uh, we went to Ganja, we went to a couple places. So yeah, that's like the most traveling you'll do. Yeah. Oh, really, Jewish? Oh, I want, I, Mike, I would really love to hear about that. That's really awesome. I would really love to hear about that. I, like I said before, I will send you guys my email. Like, it's no problem. Please send me your stories because, like, I have a lot of stories because I was also in, I also was, I also lived in Turkey before, too. So um, I had experiences where people would come up to me and literally touch my hair. Like, I wouldn't even know them. Uh, and they would touch my hair and be like, what is this? And I'm like, it's my hair. <laughs> So yeah, um, no, they didn't find it obnoxious. Sorry, I think I should let Ch Chelsea go. I think I'm talking too much, I'm sorry. Um, but um, if you guys have any questions, um, I, I'm gonna be replying in the chat box and then also I will send my email. So, so thank you guys for taking the time out to listen to me um, and I'll hand it over to Chelsea. Thank you guys. Great. Yeah, thank you so much, Monique. Um, any questions, just throw them in the chat box and, and we should have a little bit of time uh, towards the end uh, to answer additional questions. So uh, thank you and let's hear from Chelsea. So hi everyone, um, I'm Chelsea. I was an alumna of the 2019 program in Azerbaijan studying Azerbaijani. Um, I uh, was also um, outside of that an alumna of the Fulbright program as well in Azerbaijan um, back in 2014-2015. Um, I am a PhD candidate at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. I study geography and I specialize in demography, population studies, and GIS, which is geographic information systems. I make maps. Um, so my research is, my dissertation research is focused on Azerbaijan. And I was in the advanced level for Azerbaijani. Um, and my cohort, unlike the Turkish cohort where Monique was there with me as well, um, was much smaller. I believe the Turkish group was about 20 or so or more students. 
um, in the Azerbaijani group, we were about five. Um, so much smaller. And I was the only person in my class at my level. And then the first years they had, I think, three people. And then the second intermediate level was only one person as well. Um, the, I would say, depending on your level, you're gonna have a different experience in just any language exchange or program. Um, the one thing that I would say, the advantage of studying Azerbaijani in Azerbaijan is that you'll have lots of opportunities to practice Azerbaijani. Um, and that is, I would say, a huge advantage because you can speak Turkish in other places, but you really can't speak Azerbaijani in other places. You can um, in some parts of Russia, in some parts of Georgia, but you're going to get a lot more attention in practice when you're in the country of Azerbaijan studying Azerbaijani. Um, I don't see any questions. I'm just opening the chat. I don't see any questions there, but I can offer um, a few things about the program in general. I would have to advise and strongly encourage that while you're considering to apply for the CLS program, if you look on the CLS website, they do have a college representative uh, a name and a contact at your university, and usually it's the scholarship office, where you can seek out that individual to get mentorship ideas or application support. It, I went there myself. It was an excellent learning experience because not only did they read drafts of my, my essays, but I also gave me come, some points and suggestions on uh, statistics of like who at our university applied to Azerbaijan, and what level did they get? Um, another thing I would encourage you to consider is to apply even if you don't get it. I've applied four times to the CLS program. I won it twice and I accepted once. And so that, again, you have to consider is about the language and also the level and what your motivations are for the language study. Um, for me, it was a good fit this last summer because I really needed Azerbaijani to do my dissertation research. And I can I speak Turkish at the superior level, and I also speak Russian at the superior level. Um, but my Azerbaijani was not at that level when it comes to writing and reading. And so that was my argument that I really needed to speak, read and write Azerbaijani, especially read and write um, at the advanced level for my dissertation research. So I would advise you to think about when sometimes people ask like, oh, which language I should study or which, um, it's not so much the country I want to emphasize, it's about the language. Um, it's critical language scholarship. So I, I would really encourage you when you're drafting your application to think about why are you wanting to study this language? Because it's a lot of work. Um, it's, a, it's very intensive um, to sit in the same class with the same people every single day, then do excursions, have lunch with them, can be pretty exhausting. And so you have to really be motivated and have a clear idea as to why this language is why you wanna study it. Um, I'm seeing something in the chat. Uh, what kind of students in Turkish programs looking for respectively? Um, if it would be helpful if you address the name of, or if you're just addressing it for everyone. Uh, okay, so that, that one's addressed to me. Actually, no, I don't, there's actually not, the, I was the, also, let me tell you about the makeup of my cohort. I was the only graduate student. All the other uh, participants in the Azerbaijani program were undergraduates. They were uh, junior, seniors, first level or second year. Um, they, none of them have ever been to Azerbaijan. They had no connection to Azerbaijan prior to that. I was the only person in the group that had that experience. Um, uh, what aspects of Azerbaijan culture language did you find unique compared to Russian Turkish? So yeah, and that's a very good question as well, because Monique had a unique experience studying Turkish, um, but in Azerbaijan. Um, okay, so I'm going to answer this question about what was unique. So Azerbaijanis are unique in the way that they have a mix in their language and as well as in their customs. They do have an integration of a lot of Russian words and Turkish words, um, but they also have a lot of Persian words in, in their language. And that also does become apparent in their culture as well. They have a lot of cuisines that are much more closer to Persian than they are to Turkish cuisines. 
Um, although Azerbaijan and Turkey are very close and they call each other brothers, their culture has a very much a strong base of a uh, Iranian Persian influence and also as well as a Russian vibe or structure. But um, I've been going to Azerbaijan uh, back and forth for about 11 years now. And I would say in recent years, it's less Russian experience and influence. It's much less compared to what it was uh, a few, few many years ago. Um, I would say the majors of individuals that go to these programs in general, but in Azerbaijan, and I think Bo can speak to that statistically, but um, from my observation from the Turkish group, I did not interact with them because I was speaking Azerbaijani, not Turkish in Azerbaijan. Um, the Turkish group had, I think, a mix of, and Bo can correct me if I'm wrong, a mix of undergrads and graduates. Maybe in the past, they maybe had some graduates. It really depends, I believe, on the cohort year and who applies. Um, talking about waitlisted, I, so let me say this. My, so when I did my master's, I actually applied to Turkish in Turkey, and this was quite a few years ago, and, um, Turkish in Turkey, I was an alternate, a finalist, but I did not get it uh, twice, two years in a row. And then I also got Russian and I was a finalist and I did not get it. Um, then, so that was like, what, three times? Now, fourth time I applied to Azerbaijani and I was a finalist and I won it, um, but I had to decline it because I um, already had to accept something that told me a month before the CLS program. And so then this last summer, I um, applied and I got it. And so uh, this is when I was on the CLS pro program. So I really suggest it's, it's not really about your application or you as an applicant. It's more about who they are looking for in that year for the cohort. So it could be when I look back at my applications and talk to the university representative is that my level was probably too advanced for the cohorts um, that I was applying to. Um, but also, too, it could just be the makeup of the group that they're looking for. Um, in when I looked, it was no graduate students or it was all undergrads or one year it was more graduate students than some undergrads or some years it was not even about what your study level, but it was more of they have an even distribution of advanced and intermediate and uh, beginner level. So it really depends on that year and who applies and what they're looking for. Um, for Azerbaijani, I would say, generally speaking, looking at the next question, Yes, uh, there's a lot more beginners. It's not very common, if you have noticed, to, to have advanced levels of speaking in Azerbaijani. Um, I think I was at the advanced level so easily because I do speak superior level of Turkish as well as Russian, as well as being in back and forth in the country for many years. So I think from that alone, I could already communicate very well um, in, in Azerbaijani. I just did not have the grammatical structure or training formally um, in Azerbaijani to do the work I needed. So that's why I needed to be on the CLS program. Uh, I think Turkish also has a big uh, um, acceptance rate for a beginner level as well. Um, but again, it's, it really depends on your cohort uh, makeup. Because in my cohort for Azerbaijani, I was the only grad and the only advanced speaker. And that was a great opportunity for me because I got to really in a way, um, mentor the beginner level and practice more Azerbaijani with them on our tour excursions. We would um, practice phrases that they would say. The, also, the language partners, I would emphasize, are excellent. Um, not only are they very excited to meet you and learn about you, sometimes you're the first American they will ever have, have interacted with. So it's a very exciting opportunity for them. They're usually university students. Um, and my language partner, like Monique, I still talk to her on WhatsApp or other applications on Instagram, Facebook. Um, and it's great because they, they are so excited that you're learning their language. They are so excited that you're going to hang out with them and go have tea with them. It's, it's a very, very welcoming environment. And it's a great learning opportunity because that's what Monique said perfectly. Um, so I'm Mexican. Um, I'm mixed. And so, you know, it, it, it's hard sometimes to, as Monique said, to imagine that we don't fit a stereotype always of what you expect people to be from America. And so I find it a great opportunity to explain how, you know, it's really mixed um, in many ways in America. It's the melting pot, you know, what you hear about. 
and how my culture is similar to their culture in some ways, and then how there are differences. So that's, those are great points uh, to think about in your applications, um, because these are, these are great opportunities to, to be a cultural ambassador while you're on the program. Um, what do you think regards Turkish speaking level? I think I addressed all the questions that were directed to me um, at this point. I don't, I don't know about timing. I'll, um, Bo, you can tell me if, uh, looks like there is, someone asked about the medical profession. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, I was just thinking maybe Michael could, um, could clarify. Uh, we do have participants sometimes who, who do the program who are studying to be doctors that will intersect very specifically with their language goals, their medical path. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think it, it sometimes happens. Um, you know, it can be harder because medical students have very condensed um, academic programs that they're usually on. Um, however, um, if they are committed to a, a certain part of the world and they need to linguistic fluency, then, then CLS can be a really good thing for them. Um, and the answer to the short answer to Jonah's question is yes, <laughs> there are many um, participants who are, are business majors. I do have a couple more slides. Um, I know we, we, have, we have sort of seamlessly gone into the Q&A and I'm grateful to, to our alumni ambassadors um, for beginning all of these conversations and really spurring the interest and, and getting the gears turning um, with all the attendees today. Um, so I'm going to do a couple more slides and then we can kind of continue with the uh, with the um, Q and A, and I see there are great questions that, that that I can answer in the chat box too. So we will we will definitely get to those really soon. Um, but um, we do have a couple tips um, for the application, uh, and and this is kind of speaks to some of the questions that were just asked. Basically, ideal candidates can come from any discipline, uh, all backgrounds. Um, they're you know often interested in representing the U.S. abroad. Um, and they need, they demonstrate that they understand the program and are prepared to succeed. Um, now this means they're prepared to adapt. They're prepared to adapt to a rigorous academic program. They understand the intensive nature of the program and they're ready for it. Um, and you know, that they, they will demonstrate this in their essays. Um, so in your essays, you can address your ability to study intensively, your skills at adapting to a group program setting and your cultural flexibility and maturity. You should definitely show that you're motivated to pursue the language study after the completion of the program, because as you know, probably no one becomes fluent in two months. Um, so you should articulate that plan, how you're going to continue learning and using the language in the future. And finally, the most important thing uh, is you need to make that connection between your language and your career goals. How are you going to use this language in your academic uh, work or in your professional field? Um, and that looks, so it looks a little bit different in every um, application. And really the more you can say, share some specific ideas beyond the general um, is, is going to help you. The timeline for the application, and there's Chelsea, um, is uh, the application's open now, as you know. Um, it's online, you, you probably already been there. You can go to that URL down at the bottom and check it out. There's a lot of resources down there too, including an application tips video that I encourage you to watch. The application, as I said, needs to be submitted no later than 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday, November 17th this year. Uh, in January, every applicant is notified of whether they advanced or not to the semi-found semi-final round of selection. This notification is done by email. So make sure you include a valid email address that's going to be your email address for the next six months or so in your application and check your spam filters. Um, again, that email comes in January. Those who advance to the semi-final round um, can expect to be notified in early March of whether they've been selected for the award or chosen to be an alternate. Students who are selected for the award will have about two weeks to accept or decline the offer. Uh, and if they decline the then the award is offered to an alternate candidate. So um, we can address any questions about the, the, the application um, in the Q&A. We do have time for questions now. There's a big question that came up a couple times. Um, I see most recently from Michael. Um, 
I was referring to COVID. Um, COVID was the reason the program is virtual this year. Um, all CLS sites uh, have been have have had virtual programs in 2020, um, and so this is why the program is virtual. Now, um, in previous years, when there's a conflict, uh, in in 2015 there was a, a series of conflicts and terrorist attacks in Turkey, and the State Department moved the program, the Turkish program, to Azerbaijan. So there is a precedent for moving a program, having it in a different place. Um, we don't need to think about the hypothetical scenario of Nagorno-Karabakh because COVID has already prevented the program from happening um, this year in Azerbaijan. Um, but having said all that, I can also just add that the State Department does follow the geopolitical um, situation in each country, um, especially as it relates relates to military conflicts and um, it makes a decision to have the program or not. Um, we've also um, certainly, you know, dealt, we certainly work in parts of the world that have had unstable periods um, in the last 20 years or so. So this is something the State Department is very uh, mindful of and pays attention to um, because the partic obviously participant safety is, is the number one um, priority for the program. Do you know when we might be notified of the online or in-person status of the CLS program for 2021? So you can expect, if you apply to CLS this fall, you can expect an email in January notifying you of your status as an alternate candidate, as a, uh, a semi-finalist, I'm sorry, as a semi-finalist candidate or a declined candidate. In March, you would receive an email saying you are a finalist, an alternate candidate or a declined candidate. Um, the decision to be about whether the program will happen or not uh, due to COVID probably will not happen until early spring. You would be notified prior to that about your status in the CLS program. So we will, we will continue to operate our, our evaluation, our selection panels, um, regardless of the COVID situation. We might receive word a little bit later of the COVID situation. By that point, we already hope to have our cohorts for the 2021 program. No, it is not confirmed that it's virtual for 2021. I need to emphasize that this is going to be confirmed it probably in early spring 2021. So the in-person site for 2020 was going to be in Bursa, Turkey. Michael asked this, and I, I, I think I can share that. Um, but right now the virtual program is being operated out of Ankara. Um, and. These are a little bit technical questions, but Chelsea Monique, feel, please feel free to jump in. I think your, <laughs> your answers are often more interesting than mine. Section 14 of the application, activities and employment. Um, do we just... Bursa is amazing. I, I, I've been to Bursa before. Uh, when I was in Bursa, it's even more a little crazy because they really don't see darker skinned people. So like I was literally walking down like a street, it's like a carnival. And I was getting flowers every every other like street. <laughs> Sorry, just a little funny story. That's a cool story. <laughs> yeah, it was really awesome. Honestly, I felt like a celebrity. They thought I was Beyonce. I'm going to answer a question real quick from Sally. Can we apply if we graduate the spring before the program? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You just need to be eligible in the fall semester now. I saw a question about where students can indicate, or, or on the application, and students indicating their interests um, and their, their outside activities, whether they can just list them or they have to go into detail. Um, if the application question asks for an estimate of number of hours that you do an activity, you can indicate that. Otherwise, you can just list the activity that you do. Um, if you participate in a club, or an organized activity, you can just list the name of that organized activity. And thank you everyone for your goodwill and um, patience for the first 20, 25 minutes of the presentation. Um, uh, as I mentioned, I'm back in the office today and it's a little bit weird getting readjusted to all of this superior technology. Is Azerbaijani looking for straight beginners, do you think? Um, well, I think that 
many of the applicants to Azerbaijani are beginners. Um, so we are looking for applicants, definitely. Um, it sometimes happens that alumni do the program and so continue with their study of Azerbaijani. If the program is canceled because of the conflict, could it take place in Turkey? Preemptive, thank you for indulging my neuroticism. <laughs> no, I understand. Um, the answer is I, I don't know. This, this comes at the recommendation of the State Department. However, they in the past have proven themselves to be very flexible and um, responsive in moving the program and finding communities of speakers um, where we can facilitate the immersion environment. Um, so I think the priority is not to, you know, the, would, the instinct would not be to cancel the program. The instinct would be would, to find an environment where Azerbaijani is spoken and then set the program up there. So, um, yeah. Um, I, I just want to note as well that um, we were, we we're planning on sharing this webinar on the website, but um, I believe we will probably be re-recording it so that we have a better movement of the slides. Um, but we will uh, try to represent some of these really broadly applicable questions um, in sort of a simulated Q&A, which we'll probably record next week. Um, so please look for that link on the CLS website. It might be a little bit later in being put up only because of uh, the delay. We might need a few days to re-record. Um, and I encourage, um, Olivia had a question about a typical day for CLS students, um, which is a great question. Um, there are videos on the website uh, of alumni who are talking about their experiences um, on program and they do talk about everyday life. Um, I think it's something that Chelsea and Monique also touched on as well, but CLS students are really busy. Um, they often have four hours of of studies in the morning um, or around lunchtime. And then they're busy with either program activities or spending time with their host family language partner in the afternoon. Yes, thank you to Simone. She is the <laughs> attendee MVP, it looks like. Uh, <laughs> if the Turkish program is in person this coming year, we'll be in Bursa. Um, I, um, um, I wanted to talk about the... Well, um, Day -day we announced the me, sites and the dates for the program in March. So rather than take out a crystal ball or, or make a stab at a guess, I would just say that the program has been in Ankara and Borsa in the past. The 2020 program in person, we were planning to be in Borsa. So Borsa is definitely on that list of places where it could potentially be in 2021. But I would um, keep an eye on the website uh, in March of 2021 and also in the email that goes out to finalists the site should be should be indicated on there um, and that's especially important for you to note if that you know if it, if it matters in your decision um, so par participants do get medical coverage um, for uh, through um, a service called ASPI which basically provides um, it's a reimbursement plan. Medical expenses in country are usually quite low. Um, so participants cover the costs and then have them reimbursed through this plan. Um, it does not cover pre-existing conditions. And many times our participants have their own uh, coverage that supplements the ASPE coverage um, that we provide on the program. If you are a federal employee, are you still eligible for the program? Yes, you can apply um, for CLS. Uh, if you're a federal employee. Okay, um, could I possibly talk about day-to-day -day life, Bo? Is that okay if I quickly answer a question about day-to-day -day life? Great. Um, I, my best advice, guys, is to just, like, keep yourself busy. Like, if you, after class, you're not going to want to immediately, like, study until you get to your house. So probably, like, plan to go get some lunch with maybe, like, your uh, language partner or if you make any friends at the university, because there are also other people studying at the university as well, other than you. Like, I know I met a couple of my friends at the university and we would just like go get food after class and just kind of relax our mind and go home and do homework. And then like maybe have like tea with my, my host sister and invite her sister, her friends over, we would have tea. I'll honestly say keep yourself like busy. Like if you just feel like you're just sitting down, like, like 
doing nothing like try and stay busy because that's how you're gonna make the best out of your experience you know um when I got to speak at the Baku Youth Center that was because I was always networking I was always like introducing myself I was always getting contact information I I think it's really important to network because now to this day even like one of the ladies at the Baku Youth Center is actually helping me get Fulbright. Like, it's really crazy how these people can help you later down the road. Um, so yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Okay, so are there any other questions? Um, forgive me if I missed something in the box. Maybe you could repaste it if it's on your mind. Um, I saw a question um, about what type of students come to, to CLS Turkish and CLS Azerbaijani. I can offer my anecdotal point of view. Um, in my experience, a lot of applicants and participants of CLS Azerbaijani and Turkish are, inter are, are interested in this intersection of culture. And many of them come to CLS Azerbaijani and CLS Turkish through their interest in other regions, actually. So, whether that's Russia or the Middle East um, or North Africa. Um, Turkey is sort of critical, you know, strategically important and culturally connected to all of those other cultures. And so um, that's how many participants find their way towards Turkish and Azerbaijani in my, in, in my observation. Oh, Sophia, thank you for bearing with me. Um, I'm glad the chat has been active and you all have been able to kind of communicate and exchange um, ideas. Um, I, I don't know if Monique and Chelsea are still here, but I can, I have all the uh, attendee information. Um, and please, um, you know, if you're interested in reaching out to them as Alumni ambassadors, um, write the address that's on the screen now, CLS at American um, I, you know, I think we would then work to, to connect you with them. Um, I'll, I'm trying to, before we end, I'm trying to hurry and send this video in the group chat. Um, super. So I, yeah, so I, please I, do, please do reach out. Um, I think, you know, instead of writing the, the emails in the chat, chat um, I, w I would just point you to that email address, CLS at American Councils.org. Um, and then we can figure out um, which email would be best to contact them because sometimes we have alumni ambassadors set up with different email addresses. I'm going to keep a copy of this chat too. Um, and I really hope that I see all of these names in the chat come up in our applications that we have for the 2021 program. Um, it's a year of great uncertainty with COVID, but I think that's all the more reason for us to double down with our interests and our ambitions. Um, so please do apply. And uh, you can reach out to CLS at AmericanCouncils.org if you have any questions about the application, about how to make your application better, or you know, if something is on your mind. All right, everybody, I'm gonna wind this down. Um, but again, um, you can look for uh, uh, <laughs> a more functional facsimile of this <laughs> webinar on our website next week. Um, and, um, or, you know, another webinar that basically kind of covers some of your questions you've asked and a lot of the information here with functional slides. So tune in to that and share with um, folks who may not have been able to be with us today. Uh, rest of the week and weekend. And as I said, we'll be waiting for your application. Thanks again to Monique and Chelsea and Hashakal. Guru Shurus. Guru Shurus.